This is the last episode of the year. This episode of Tech Shop is brought to you by Gamefly. Never buy a bad game. Merry Christmas and welcome to episode 45 of Tech Shop. As always, I am Paul Bauer, aka Twitter.com slash Elder Pablo. Yes, this will be the last episode of the year. I've been doing Tech Shop every week since before the summer, and it's time for a break. Well, okay, I took a week off for Thanksgiving too, but you wouldn't have watched it then anyway. Anyway, I was having troubles thinking of something to do this week, so I figured I would keep it simple and give you my list of the top 10 of my favorite freeware programs that I load onto Windows pretty much any time I do a new install. These are free tools that I use all the time, and some of them you might use yourself. Now, all of these are free for corporate use, so you may not be able to use these in your work environment without paying, but I'll let you look that stuff up yourself. Before I get to my list, though, let's take a break for this week's sponsor. Have you ever purchased a game at the store, were totally excited to play it, but when you got it home and popped it into your gaming system, it was the worst game you've ever played? Have you ever purchased a brand new game and got bored with it after the first few days? Well, let's end that cycle and have games delivered to your door through Gamefly. With Gamefly, you can pick the games you want to play, and they're mailed right to your house. You don't have to go anywhere. You can also keep the games as long as you want with no late fees. If you don't like a game, send that sucker back, and the next one in your queue will arrive a few days later. If you really like a game, you can check a box online that you want to keep it. Your account will be charged, and Gamefly will send you the box. It can't get any easier. Also, right now, until the end of December, you can save up to 50% off of retail on used games for just about every major system by clicking on the link below this video on TechShop.com. Hurry up though, because this promotion ends on December 31st. If you haven't tried Gamefly, just go to TechShop.com and click on the Gamefly banner at the top of the page and sign up for your no-risk free trial. Clicking on the banner at the top of TechShop.com lets them know that TechShop sent you so you can help out the show. Remember, visit TechShop.com and click on the Gamefly banner at the top of the page to sign up for your no-risk free trial. Gamefly. Never buy a bad game. And we're back. At the beginning of the show, I said I would give you my top 10 freeware programs that I use every day. I'm going to start that list off with Ninite. Ninite is awesome and a huge time saver because it installs almost all other freeware programs that I'm going to mention for you in one easy package. It's perfect for newly deployed computers that need to have software installed on them. Just select the programs you want to install and download the Ninite installer. It will automatically go out to the internet and download the latest versions of all of your favorite freeware programs. The next freeware app on my list is mRemoteNG. It is the open source fork of the now discontinued mRemote application. mRemoteNG is a multi-protocol remote connections manager. If you are a system administrator, this is a must have, especially if you're remoting into multiple servers per day. It handles RDP, VNC, ICA, SSH, Telnet, Rlogon, and a few others. On top of that, you can save your connections for use later. I use it all the time in my office to connect to over 100 Windows and Linux servers, as well as switches and firewalls. One thing to note, though, is that the connection file is not encrypted, so if you save your passwords in the file, you need to protect it. I personally like to save my connections file in an encrypted volume created by my next freeware program, TrueCrypt. I've done a few episodes on TrueCrypt, and even though I showed a couple of ways where your data might not be safe in the hands of an experienced hacker, I still trust it and believe that it's a pretty rock solid program with great security. If you've never used it, TrueCrypt was originally designed to create encrypted volume containers and for encrypting USB and external hard drives. At its core, that is still what it's for. A few years ago, the ability to fully encrypt your Windows workstation, operating system and all was added. Number four on my list is GreenShot. When I first got in IT, all the sysadmins and desktop techs wanted a program called Snagit. Well, a few years ago, I found a really great freeware alternative in GreenShot. GreenShot sits on your system tray and waits for you to press the print screen button. When you press print screen, you can drag around the area you need to take a screenshot of. You can also do stuff like press alt print screen just to take the screenshot of the active window. After you've taken your screenshot, you can draw circles and add arrows, write notes, and do all sorts of other great stuff you would expect with a screenshot program. Once you have your screenshot, you can do further editing of your image with the next program on my list, GIMP. 
GIMP stands for GNU Image Manipulation Program and is available for Linux, Windows, and Mac. GIMP is probably the best and most versatile alternative to the high-priced Photoshop program by Adobe. Also, there are many tutorials online so you can edit an image with GIMP just as easy as you would with Photoshop. The next two tools I'll mention are from a small software company called Pyroform. They make a well-known and widely used registry cleaner called CCleaner, which although I like, it didn't really make my list. I will, however, give them an honorable mention because I love its sister programs way more. The first one of those sister programs is Defragler. Defragler is a disk defragmenter utility that, in my opinion, is way more versatile than the built-in version that comes with Windows. I originally started using it with Windows XP because I wanted the ability to schedule defrags automatically. A scheduler is built into Defragler. You can also configure settings in Defragler to move large files to the end of the drive, which will improve performance even more than defragmenting your computer already will be. Number seven on the list and the second program from Pyroform is Recover. Recover is a file recovery program that can recover deleted files from your hard drive even after they've been emptied out of the recycle bin. This little puppy works very well and has saved my bacon on a few occasions when important files were deleted and I needed to get them back fast. Speaking of files, if you manage Windows and Linux systems like me, sometimes you have to copy files from one to the other. I found that the easiest way to do that is by using my next favorite utility, WinSCP. WinSCP runs on Windows and gives you an easy to use FTP-like interface for copying files to and from a Linux server. I've used it to copy files from Ubuntu, Gentoo, CentOS, as well as VMware ESX and Citrix Zen servers over to Windows. It just works great, and since it's using the SCP protocol, file transfer is encrypted and secure. The next one on my list I use all the time for writing scripts, editing HTML and other code, and even for writing the script every week for TechShop. It's Notepad++. Notepad++ is a more robust text editor for Windows that beats the living bejesus out of the built-in Notepad program. It formats more universally with other text editors found in Linux like Nano or Vi. Plus it does color coding and highlighting when writing code, which makes coding from scratch way easier. The last free program on my list, but certainly not the least, is one I can't live without anymore. It's LastPass. LastPass is a cloud-based password manager that works in every major browser. Your passwords are stored in an encrypted database in the cloud, so your passwords go wherever you need them. If you don't have access to the cloud, don't sweat it because a local copy of the database is stored on your computer, so you'll still have access to your precious passwords. Storing your password in the default password store in your favorite browser these days is really not secure. And if you're still doing that, you need LastPass now. That's all I have for this episode. Are there some freeware tools that you use all the time that I forgot to mention that you think should have been in the list? Let me know what programs you like to use in the comments below or hit me up on Facebook or on Twitter. I hope you all have a wonderful Christmas, happy Hanukkah, happy Kwanzaa, or a happy Festivus. Be sure to like, fave, subscribe, and we'll see you Monday, January 14th, right here on Tech Shop. Tech Chop is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. TechPodcast.com. If it's tech, it's here.